My name is Laura Eccles Richter, and it is so good to be with you for our noon devotional today. I hope that all of you have not only been having this opportunity to join us at noon, but also to join us in our GPS each and every day. Every morning on our Facebook page, there is a guide for prayer and for study. It's a daily Bible reading along with a question for us to reflect on, to pray about. This morning's was actually from chapter 9 of the book of Acts. We've been reading through the book of Acts in the GPS and in our worship series. And as we look at that today, that chapter 9 begins with the story of Saul. Saul who went on a road to Damascus. Saul who had been persecuting the Jews. Saul who had been the one who had been at the stoning of Stephen. And on the road to Damascus, he's blinded. And he cries out to God, Why? What? What's going on? And the question comes back, Why are you persecuting me, Saul? Saul goes for three days blinded. And he has this powerful conversion experience. Falls into a deep belief of Jesus as the Christ. And he comes out of that experience a new person, ready to spread the good news, ready to share hope and opportunity for others. And yet, as he begins to try to journey to Jerusalem, the disciples, the other believers, they're afraid of him. They had watched what he had done to their friends. They had been there at the stoning of Stephen. They were frightened of him. They didn't believe that he had really changed. And yet in chapter 9, verse 26, it says, When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. They didn't believe he was really a disciple. But then Barnabas brought Saul to the apostles and told them the story about how Saul saw the Lord on the way and that he the Lord had spoken to Saul. And he also told them about the confidence with which Saul had preached in the name of Jesus in Damascus. Barnabas spoke on behalf of Saul. Saul who would become Paul. Saul who would be the one who would begin to start churches all over the region. Barnabas, the name encourager, the one who gave Saul a second chance and invited the disciples to do the same. I think about all the second chances that are lifted up in the scripture. The second chance given to Peter after he denied Jesus. The second chance offered to Thomas who said, I've got to see it for myself. And Jesus appeared to him. Over and over again, there are second chances. The question is, will we be encouragers of one another? During this time of social distancing, I know that many of you have been reflecting on your lives. I know I have. Many of us have been reflecting about our relationships. Many of us have been in this time period beginning to think, this is a time maybe where I can begin to start over. And what better opportunity during the season of Easter? Billy mentioned on Sunday in the sanctuary worship that, that this is a time to, to start over for all of us, that all businesses are now a startup, that, that the church is, has an opportunity to start new in so many ways. And so how will we encourage one another? How will we encourage ourselves to know that God always offers second chances and that now is a great opportunity for us to be encouragers of others. Reach out to somebody you haven't spoken to in a while. Write a note of encouragement to somebody. Children have been offering sidewalk chalk all over the place, offering encouragement and hope. They've lifted my spirit with joy, just as many of you did on Sundays you drove through the Circle Drive. 
how will we encourage one another during the season? May we all continue to know that not only do we receive a second chance, but that we can be encouragers of others as well. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for always extending to us a second chance, a new opportunity to be in relationship with you. And God, may we be encouragers of others. May we reach out to others. May we extend forgiveness and love and grace to others. During the season, oh God, may we know that we can begin anew, reclaim those things that are important to us, reclaim what are really our essentials, and continue to live in such a way that we care for our neighbors. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen.